This is episode 15 of Eco Gorillas, written and read by Scott A.J. Johnson. For more information, visit ecogorillas.com. To support this project and get early access to all the chapters, head over to patreon.com slash sajjohnson. This week's episode is a little short, but we all need a break every once in a while, and this will give me a chance to get some new chapters recorded to go farther into the future. Thanks for understanding. If you've gotten this far, I hope you're enjoying it. So take a minute to tell a friend. And if you've done that, please consider leaving this podcast a review on iTunes, YouTube, or wherever you listen. And thanks. This podcast contains fleeting, explicit language. Chapter 32. Three. Places. Infrastructure. Humans are a product of the interplay of their genetic propensities and surroundings. Before the Neolithic Revolution, 10,000 years ago, when humans first started settling down to an agricultural way of life, they were hunter-gatherers, moving throughout a region in search of seasonally available food and resources. They fitted themselves into the landscape with only minor modifications of their environment. Once becoming farmers, they transformed the land from plains or forest into a regulated growing environment. Humans were still brought face-to-face with the cyclical nature of life, long-term geologic processes, and the effects of climate and weather. Since the Industrial Revolution, humans have worked towards a built world that attempts to remove the uncertainty of weather, ignores the long-term climate outlook, and sanitizes birth and death to the point of abstraction. Nowhere is this more evident than in the infrastructure of the industrialized world. Except for region-wide storms or natural disasters that remind us of our place on Earth, many people in the built-up parts of the world feel that they can ignore what is going on outside of their air-conditioned, hermetically sealed buildings. At most, quote-unquote nature provides something nice to look at out of one's window. This mindset has become entrenched over the last century as people left outdoor jobs for factories and offices. The only time spent outside was during sporting events, parties, lawn care, or planned camping excursions. It is understandable that the natural world has become, quote-unquote, othered in the anthropological sense, that is, treated as different or aliens from oneself. The fact that we can use the redundant phrase, natural world, without jarring most readers, is a testament to this condition. The earth is everything in it and on it, and any belief that you as a human being are not a natural part of it is hubris. However unintentionally you came to this conclusion. Putting a raincoat on a dog doesn't make him any more or less descended from wolves than putting pants on removes you from your species' seven million year evolutionary separation from the other apes. The way in which we shape the world around us dictates how we engage with the ecosystem. The more we try and remove ourselves from what's going on outside, the less likely we are to care about what's happening out there. From an anthropocentric point of view, this would be fine, except that what is now out there will have an increasing effect on what is in here. Infrastructure blinds us from the world by attempting to shield us from change. We mean to pull back that veil. By picking apart energy generation, food production, raw material acquisition, transportation, communication, and infrastructure, we hope to show the incompatibility of where we are now to where we need to be if we, as a species, want to continue to be part of this world. It's up to humans to decide. The Earth has no stake in our survival. We can either live as part of this world or burn ourselves out. This is the choice we have to make. End of chapter. Chapter 33. Bear in the Woods. Summer, 2015. Hey, Eva. Eric poked his head out of his hammock. He had been reading in the basement to beat the summer heat. Hmm? Said she out of the depths of her own hammock. Listen to this. Quote, To emphasize their principle of direct personal accountability, they issued Crimes Against Nature awards to individuals who committed especially gross offenses against the environment and their fellow human beings. These, it turned out, brought very unwelcome attention to the politicians and business executives who received them. End quote. What's that from? Ecotopia Emerging by Kallenbach. Page 111, if you must know. Don't you think the awards should come with a prize? All the best ones do. Newspaper article. Grizzly bear may be put down after mauling park ranger. August 10th, 2015. Yellowstone, Wyoming. Wired News Agency. After a mauled body was found last Friday, a female bear and two cubs were trapped over the weekend. A DNA test will determine if this is the bear that fatally attacked Lane Crosby, 63, of Billings, Montana. If the captured bear has Cosby's DNA in her digestive tract, she will be euthanized and her cubs given to a zoo or park if possible. Cosby, who worked at the park's clinic for five years, was a, quote, experienced hiker, end quote. His body was found half a mile off a designated trail with defensive wounds on his arms. He was not carrying bear mace. Wilderness experts point out that an experienced hiker should not be off trail, especially without bear mace, and the mother was likely defending her cubs from an intruder in her territory. End of newspaper article. Decoded messages between Eva and Eric. 
Eva, 12th of August, 2015. You saw the Bear Mall story? Eric, 13th August, 2015. Yes. You saw the Mind Spill stories? Candidates for Crime Against Nature? Eva, 14 August, 2015. Yes, my thoughts exactly. We'll start on this. Eric, 15 August, 2015. Let me know if need help. Newspaper article. Grizzly bear involved in attack put down. August 14th, 2015. Yellowstone, Wyoming. Wired News Agency. The grizzly bear involved in the August 7th mauling of a park worker at Yellowstone was euthanized after DNA tests confirmed she was responsible for the mauling. Lane Cosby, 63, of Billings, Montana, was hiking off trail when he ran into a female grizzly with two cubs. He was mauled, partially consumed, and his body was cached by the bear. Park rangers interpret this behavior to indicate aggression rather than defensiveness on the part of the bear. The cubs, weighing only 50 pounds, were born the previous winter and are not old enough to fend for themselves. They will be given to the Toledo Zoo. Newspaper article. Yellowstone Park victim of dark pranks after bear attack. August 21st, 2015. Yellowstone, Wyoming, Wired News Agency. One week after a grizzly bear was put down for mauling a park employee in the previous week, officials at Yellowstone National Park report they have been the victims of a prank by a group calling themselves the Eco Gorillas. On the morning of August 17th, the park received a letter stating that they had won a, quote, crime against nature, end quote, award and an associated prize. A park official, speaking on the condition of anonymity, summarized the contents of the letter, quote, It said we had won a Crime Against Nature award since we put down a bear and sent two cubs to a zoo. It said that it was wrong to view the guilty party as the bear, who was out minding her own bear business instead of the human, who decided to go on to our restricted area. The letter went on to congratulate us on this achievement. It was really sarcastic. It said that since we were letting the bear's home be treated like a city park for picnics, they would provide the baskets. At the time that the senior staff were first reading the letter, we started getting calls from all over the park about picnic baskets. End quote. Park staff discovered 86 picnic baskets, most of them near Lake Village on the northern side of Yellowstone Lake and not far from where Lane Cosby, 63, had been mauled on August 7th. Each basket was filled with gutted lake trout, an invasive species that environmentalists argue is crowding out native Yellowstone cutthroat trout. The baskets smelled intensely enough for the staff to find them easily, but not before the odor had attracted dozens of bears. It was estimated that the baskets had been placed late on Sunday evening. Enough bears showed up that rangers had to close the area to the public out of fear for their safety. The park released a statement condemning the prank as dangerous. Quote, We work tirelessly to protect both people and animals from dangerous encounters here at Yellowstone National Park. By attracting bears to a highly trafficked area, it could have potentially put visitors in mortal danger had we not closed the area down. It was a reckless and potentially fatal prank, and we will be investigating it with the help of the FBI, as this is a national park. End quote. Since then, the park staff, security, and now FBI have been playing a cat-and-mouse game with the individual or group that is placing baskets full of gutted lake trout at prominent tourist locations throughout the park. End of article. Newspaper article. Eco-terrorists claim responsibility for dangerous pranks at Yellowstone. August 24, 2015. Yellowstone, Wyoming. Wired News Agency. In response to a bear attack and subsequent euthanasia of the bear, a group calling itself the Eco Gorillas has claimed responsibility for placing baskets of gutted fish throughout the park. The smell of the fish has attracted bears to public areas. The group, which gained notoriety with the destruction of the Glen Canyon Dam in 2011 and other activities classified as terrorism by the FBI, sent a letter to park officials on Monday informing them that they had won a Crime Against Nature award for euthanizing the bear, which they claim was not guilty of doing anything other than natural bear behavior. While the National Park Service has not released the letter citing ongoing investigation, the Eco Gorillas have provided a written communication by email to media outlets. Quote, we will continue to provide picnic baskets until the NPS, National Park Service, admits that it was wrong to euthanize a bear for being a bear. We hope to call attention to the fact that humans are the interlopers. Bears should be given the deference as they're at home at Yellowstone and we are the visitors. Yellowstone is not a city park. When MPS stops treating it as a place for picnics, we'll stop giving them baskets. It's important for people to experience what Yellowstone has to offer, but not at the expense of the life that makes its home there. End quote. Picnic baskets continue to turn up throughout the park, some filled with gutted fish, while others are empty and appear to be the work of copycats. And a few innocent parkgoers have been accosted by armed FBI agents as they were carrying picnic baskets without knowing about the recent events. The park superintendent has publicly discussed the prospect of closing the park until the culprits can be apprehended. End of chapter. Chapter 34, 3.1, Energy. The solution is easy to articulate but nearly impossible to implement. Stop using fossil fuels immediately. 
We realize this sounds alarmist, but we see no other single action that could have as broad an impact as the complete cessation of the use of fossil fuels. It would have both positive and negative ramifications for our lives, but we believe the net long-term effect would be beneficial. We would have to give up some things that we have come to enjoy and expect out of life. On the other hand, it would enable us to leave a world for our children and grandchildren that stands a chance of survival. The global community has not faced a worldwide crisis since the Second World War. For generations, we have not been asked to sacrifice anything for anyone, and that has to change. End of chapter. End of episode 15 of Eco Gorillas. For more, visit ecogorillas.com.